Hi, right, this is Rob from Higher Power to H2O. Um, have some disappointing mileage numbers to give you all. Um, coming up here from uh, Oregon, there was 500 miles on flat with a trailer that I was getting 16.8 miles to the gallon in this Suburban, which on its best day would get 15 with a fresh tune-up, empty. So with the trailer, we went up to 16.8, which was good. So I did some empty mileage numbers, went to Malibu and got lost and got stuck in a lot of stop and go traffic. And my mileage was 145.6, uh, 8.98 gallons of fuel, which was 16.2 miles per gallon. So actually less than with my trailer, but still more than the Suburban normally. Um, Hit a Sunday drive and we went 95 miles and used 6.08 gallons of fuel, which is only a 15.6. Uh, so that puts it right about, um, you know, on the absolute best that the Suburban's ever got. But uh, on that high 15s, those have always been, you know, highway trips and no stop and go mileage test. Well, this trip yielded about two and a half hours of sitting in traffic and I never shut it off uh, so really disappointing numbers but I learned a lot um, watching my EGTs and um, you know watch what my O2's doing um, basically in this 1990 Suburban it has a one wire O2 sensor which means it relies on exhaust heat to get up to operating temperature well if an O2 is not at 600 degrees Fahrenheit or more, it will not read. Um, sitting idling, my EGTs are about 350. So it loses that feedback loop and goes into a uh, default mode. Uh, so watching the wideband on the Suburban, um, idling air fuel ratios uh, is about 13.8 to 1, which is quite rich. Um, you can idle safely at uh, you know, 16 to 1, 16 and a half to 1. Uh, driving up the road with the HHO, um, my uh, air fuel ratio is 15, 15, 5. Under wide open throttle, of course, it'll go to, you know, 13 even, which is pretty normal. No matter what you do to any of your sensors, it will not affect any wide open throttle numbers. Um, so, the next step before the standalone is to wire in a heated O2 sensor into this 1990 Suburban. I'm going to do it with a three wire. Uh, I will do a how-to video for any of you with uh, pre-96 Chevys or uh, Fords and I think some of the imports still used a one wire. I don't remember exactly year cutoffs but um, I'm hoping the computer will still use the EG uh, excuse me, the EGO correction, the O2 correction at an idle. It may be programmed to not accept it because it knows the O2 sensor won't read, but maybe if we get a heated sensor in there and it's still switching and it still sees that it's active, it'll keep our uh, idling mixtures nice and lean. Um, I don't exactly know what to expect, but I will try it. Um, and then of course I have the standalone, which I will be able to do. But I'm trying to do as much as I can with everybody with stock computers and uh, you know more or less stock rigs and see what, what we can be do to attack all these. So in conclusion, my bad numbers was stop and go traffic. Um, EGTs would plummet, go below 400 degrees. O2 sensor would become inactive. Computer went to a default, which made it idle quite rich. You could smell it. Um, it would quit putting water dripping out the exhaust you know as you're driving um, the, with the complete burn you'll get some water coming out the exhaust you can see this thing steam at 100 degrees you're not even seeing the, the uh, you know the new Honda hybrids and stuff doing that uh, the other thing I'll try if the uh, heated O2 doesn't work is hit it with 10 liters a minute HHO and see if that helps but uh, it's a big learning curve. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the subscriptions and questions. And my next video, probably tomorrow, Tuesday, 
I've got a lot of questions about my flashback and I'm gonna go to Lowe's and get every part number and assemble it for you guys. Um, thank you for watching and God bless.